Hi, I'm Paul Worrell, founder and chief developer of Zonified. Today is, ah, oh, I don't know, it's a Friday, I know that, um, and I can't remember the date, maybe the 14th of June. Um, uh, I'm going to go through uh, a little chat about something I encountered while I was in um, Cancun at DevCon 3 last year. Um, and brought back a lot of memories and also resurrected an interest in a technology uh, that I've worked with in the past and um, I'm seeing uh, it has some relevance in the uh, blockchain space. So um, basically it was a presentation I saw pretty much on the last day um, in a side room where they were talking uh, slightly more technically and there was a guy called Jamie Pitt that uh, was discussing uh, semantic Ethereum and uh, how it could be used to link dApps and when I attended it I didn't think it would be um, uh, the semantic web technology that uh, some years ago I'd been involved with uh, and built a team around um, but actually it was. But I was surprised that as he talked about technology, I could see that he was being kind of gentle and not um, sort of uh, evangelize some of the concepts of that technology that seem to be contentious. Um, in fact, it, it's, in the UK we have something called Marmite. And um, it's a known fact that people really like it or they don't. And semantic web technology seemed to be the same. Um, some people liked it and some people didn't. Um, but it was really interested, interesting that he resurrected that. And I had a chat with him and said we were really busy with uh, our ICO and what we were doing. But as soon as I'd got that out of the way, I'd love to have a chat about that. So um, I have contacted Jamie, he's really busy at the moment, um, but I'm, I'm sort of reaching out to other people and trying to get an idea of uh, where people are in that semantic web space um, and also get a feel for what uh, it can offer uh, the blockchain space. If you don't know the semantic web technology, it was basically uh, something that Tim Berners-Lee or Sir Tim Berners-Lee now um, uh, was evangelizing and uh, to quote him exactly he said I have a dream for the web in which computers become capable of analyzing all the data on the web the content the links and transactions between people and computers a semantic web which should make this possible has yet to emerge but when it does the day-to-day -day mechanisms of trade Bureaucracy and our daily lives will be handled by machines talking to machines. So um, that's basically what Sir Tim said. Uh, sadly, the, the technologies which became a, a set of standards under the W3C um, remained predominantly in uh, academia. Um, and when I was involved with it at JP Morgan Chase, uh, we, we did recognize a need for it um, uh, but uh, big data technologies uh, were the fashion at the time Hadoop and things like that so we tended to get a little bit marginalized also um, the heritage of the people involved with these technologies were people that um, were interested in explaining how things worked uh, uh, ensuring that it was consistent vocabularies, that concepts were described properly and standardised. And uh, in the growth hacking sort of world that has um, evolved uh, uh, over the last sort of 10 years, uh, the desire to be that accurate and that formal in things has diminished, um, with a lot of people thinking that maybe AI and, and uh, technologies like that would um, work out what things were without them having to be formally described in some technique. Um, however, there's still so much promise in those technologies. When I left JP Morgan Chase, uh, um, I created a product called Sparkly Code, um, and uh, that 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 used these technologies to um, 
allow us to describe the development process, describe the code, the dependencies and the code in the dependencies, and describe all the people that had worked uh, on uh, software products and all of the transitive uh, uh, software and code involved in a project, which of course uh, software involves many, many, many different components. Um, and that became a serious control problem. I still think it definitely is. And I think the way that that problem is solved um, uh, by companies on the market like Sonatype, which, which are probably the leader in my opinion, um, they, they still don't actually do this extra level of cognitive or knowledge-based uh, comprehension of the software. They're managing things at the binary and the version level. Um, and I, I think it's possible to do more. If you go to www.sparklycode.com um, and it's S-P-A-R-Q-L-Y code.com. If you go there, it explains what I was trying to do with that project. And what was incredible is that I started to produce all of this uh, knowledge from software um, across you know, a whole software project. And I used some visualization tools and I actually got some incredibly uh, fantastic, stereotypical um, sort of uh, 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 views of characteristics in software that demonstrates positive or negative behavior. Um, and I gave them some interesting um, terms like uh, too many cooks in the kitchen. That kind of stuff. But anyway, let's get on to uh, uh, blockchain and semantics, which Jamie was alluding to. He was specifically talking about how to link dApps. Um, but just to, to tell you what the semantic web was all about, um, it had a number of names. That was one of the problems. Uh, semantic web, uh, link data, and then um, subsequently open data. Um, it was when things became open data that actually people got a little bit confused um, and, and uh, the less technically inclined just thought that's making data uh, available, but not necessarily ensuring it's in a consumable or an authoritative uh, representation, right? So, um, so basically what Semantic was all about is that you had things okay, um, that were represented by UI, URI, Universal Resource uh, Identifiers, which is, which is a common thing if you're a developer. Um, and those URI were, were um, proposed always to be HTTP, so you could resolve them using a web browser or any form of uh, internet uh, technology or API. And there was a, a data format known as RDF, the Resource Description Framework, and that allowed you to describe data at a very low level. And then there was a number of abstractions to build higher level knowledge concepts on top of RDF, one of them known as uh, OWL, which I think was the ontology web language. And, uh, and then they created a, a language uh, called Sparkle, S-P-A-R-Q-L, and, um, and that's why uh, uh, that project was called Sparkly Code with a Q. Okay, so it allowed you to use Sparkle as a query language to query all of, all of the code end-to-end -end in your enterprise and all of the artifacts and um, other, other components and, and people. Even, even the um, source code repositories you're able to query, all, all in the same context, okay? Um, so, um, uh, and then on top of that, where you get onto knowledge, um, there's something called ontologies. Okay, now ontologies are sort of a formal and schematic um, description of a particular specialist domain. Okay, and, and this is where you start to think, hmm, this is interesting with the blockchain and smart contracts, and in particular, there's so much interest from the legal side, of course. Um, there's, there's a big hole uh, for um, allowing non-technical people to be able to read and comprehend um, what some of these smart contract concepts and environments actually mean. Um, not just uh, the legal side, you've got possibly regulators, auditors, um, all wanting to be able to come in and uh, have a meaningful representation uh, of what this technology on the blockchain is representing. So there's a tool there and a whole whole set of well-established concepts that I thought, wow, that can be uh, applied. The other thing is that um, the way that RDF works, the way that it structures itself, is actually in a graph. 
Now, um, when you look at a graph, each uh, point that connects to another point, known as a node, is connected using an arc. And with uh, um, uh, the semantic technology, every single node connection to node is known as a triple because it has three parts. It's got the um, subject, that's the, 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 the node where you start, it's the subject. It has um, a relationship to another known node, technically that's kind of known as a predicate, um, but it's a relationship to another node. And then it's got the other node at the end, uh, which is technically known as an object. Um, or you can just call it a property and that property could be just uh, you know a static string of text or something or actually it can be of course another node okay when it's another node um, and you look at it as a graph with the node connecting to node connecting to a node and sprawling off all over the place you get this incredible ability um, using the language to start to find in transitive um, relationships you know, you can just write a query and it will follow the graph all the way through, collecting the data and resolving things. So that in particular was an aspect of the technology I used for Sparkly Code, which as I say, gave me some incredibly interesting um, ways of finding concepts or behaviours in the data, uh, which could become patterns that you could automatically monitor in your software and flag up potential uh, problems like, like dependencies um, that had a, a, a security vulnerability or um, that maybe there's an employee that was working on a piece of code that's left and you find they're now working on a piece of code in a transitive dependency that's being pulled into the organisation and that because of their knowledge of your organisation that potentially could be um, a way of pushing uh, some malicious code into your organization right so um, but back back to blockchain keep sidetracking myself with my other project um, uh, after I met Jamie I had a little look around and I also noticed as a uh, was another guy at the start of last year known as uh, Johan Pfeffer who works for consensus uh, probably the leading development house on the Ethereum blockchain in the Ethereum blockchain space and he'd, or, he'd already had a history himself in Symantec so he looked at how he could use um, the modeling side to comprehend uh, how Ethereum worked, the transactions and the messaging uh, state channels, all of that stuff. So he created uh, an analogy, there's a, a Medium article actually that you will find down there and other links uh, to concepts that I'm talking about but he created an ontology uh, that allows you to formally describe uh, the concepts in Ethereum. And I feel that's an incredibly important thing to have done because when you're educating people, which I may be doing um, over the next few months, on uh, that uh, technical tier uh, of the chain in Ethereum, um, there's this way that we can agree on the terminology we use and uh, we can visualize it with uh, uh, tools that display uh, graphs and uh, ontologies. Um, and, uh, 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 and we can actually query it. Um, so we can slice up what is quite a complex set of relationships in the technology into small views uh, to allow us to focus and aid the learning process. So um, his, his uh, uh, ontology was called Ethon, ETH ontology. Um, and also, I believe there was another ontology that some guys were working on, which had a, an extensive background in semantics, known as Blondie, and I'll put the link down there as well. Um, I know that organisations that I had been working with in the past in semantics were already look had already or have already done so, um, used uh, the technology for describing legal uh, provenance you know, the provenance of various aspects of a contract and uh, the heritage um, of the clauses in the contract. They'd already done that with semantics. Um, so that is obviously uh, a natural fit for the semantic technology for describing those kinds of problems. So to, f to look at how that might apply to smart contracts, I think is a really interesting uh, idea. Um, also, I, 
it is the case that the whole user experience um, of building smart contracts and comprehending them is, is an important space to the Ethereum community. Um, and any tool and technology that would, would help uh, people comprehend the, comprehend the smart contract concepts better um, you know, would be very, very well thought of. And we have to remember, back in the day of when the semantic technology was, was trying to promote itself on its own merits, it was competing in quite a big space and lost out to big data and AI and things like that. But actually, uh, the blockchain space um, is really broad. I mean, because blockchain is not just a technology, it, it really does impact how people think about companies working together and how they're collaborating and how they're sharing uh, concepts uh, between each other. So there's a lot more, there's a, a more diverse range of people involved uh, in the blockchain. So if there's a tool that's designed to help uh, from software developers all the way through to business people uh, and, and just general uh, administrative staff, if there's a tool that can help that, um, that already exists and generally speaking has quite a few people that are aware of it and know how to use it um, and it's proved itself in a number of use cases I don't see any reason why there shouldn't be some resources going into that so um, so in conclusion I, 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 it is it's just a whole new world um, lots more people and a, an already tried and tested uh, technology um, based on the communication communicating concepts and specialist domains so i think i think we can put the two together in some way so i'm keen on f finding a way to do that um i've tried to reach out to um Kyokan. uh he hasn't pinged me back yet uh, but jamie has and a lot of my other uh, colleagues from the semantic space have also responded like uh, dean alamang who's uh was the author of um, Working Ontologies, no, uh, Semantic Web Working Ontologies, something like that. Again, I'll put, I'll put that down at uh, the bottom. Um, and, and at first, everybody says, oh, well, you know, data, data on the blockchain is bad. I'm not talking about data on the blockchain. I'm talking about understanding it and using it as a mechanism for more people to understand it.